Katie Poehler knew she was adopted, but she waited until she was 20 years old to ask her parents about the process. It was then that she found out about a little note that would send her on an incredible journey to learn more about her past. Hello, wonderful people. I'm Dane Peterson from Wonderbot, and here is... 20 years after this Chinese girl was adopted, a short note led to a miraculous chain of events. Before we begin, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. Ruth and Ken Poehler, parents to two boys, traveled all the way to China from their home in Michigan to adopt a third child. Indeed, they wanted to add the final piece to their family, a one-year-old baby girl who they named Catherine Sue. Catherine, who goes by Katie, didn't ask many questions about her roots, at least as a young child. Ruth told the BBC that her daughter asked me whose tummy she came from. Did I come from your tummy? To that, Ruth remembered responding, No, you didn't come from my tummy. You came from a lady's tummy in China. But you came from my heart. You were born of my heart. At the time, she reported that Katie appeared happy with that amount of information. Katie admitted there was always a curiosity about her biological family, though. Growing up, I never really asked questions, she said. So, when she was 20 years old, she finally decided to broach the topic on a car ride with her mom. On that day, Katie recalled asking her mom, what do you know about my adoption? Ruth then responded, oh yeah, there's something that we probably should have told you a long time ago. Needless to say, this admission piqued Katie's interest. It turned out that Ruth and Ken had been holding on to a very special letter for the first two decades of their daughter's life. The orphanage who cared for her before the adoption had passed the message on to the Polars. The note, written in Chinese, had come from Katie's biological parents. It said, Our daughter was born at 10 a.m. on the 24th day of the seven month of the lunar calendar, 1995. We have been forced by poverty and affairs of the world to abandon her. Oh, pity the hearts of fathers and mothers far and near. Thank you for saving our little daughter and taking her into your care, the note went on. If the heavens have feelings, if we are brought together by fate, then let us meet again on the broken bridge in Hangsu on the morning of the Kishi Festival 10 or 20 years from now. Later identified as Xu Lida and Chang Fenchang, Katie's parents had, indeed, fallen victim to multiple unfortunate circumstances. First of all, China had barred parents from having more than one child when Fenshang became pregnant in 1994, and she and Lida already had a daughter, Zhao Chen. The government could have enforced strict penalties on the couple, including a heavy fine and termination of the pregnancy. They could even have faced sterilization. But Fenshang was too far along in her pregnancy to have it terminated, so they secreted themselves on a houseboat until their second daughter was born. Although they saved her life, Fen Chang and Lita knew they couldn't keep Katie. Her biological father said he knew what to do. I thought that even if we couldn't afford to raise her, we could give her away, he said. So, as Lita recalled, on the morning of the third day after Katie was born, I prepared her milk, I held her, and I hugged her for a while. Then I walked to the market. She didn't cry. She was asleep. I kissed her gently. I knew it was the final farewell. Of course, Lita left his newborn daughter with the note that would make its way into her hands two decades later. In the meantime, he visited the broken bridge on the day of the Kishi festival as designated in the letter. Derived from Chinese legend, the Kishi festival honors the day in which a mythical herder and his lost love were able to reunite on a magical bridge. Lita wasn't so sure he'd get the same happy ending, though. I knew there wasn't much hope, but I still kept waiting, he said. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, Katie weighed her options. I think my biggest fear in meeting my biological family is that somehow I'll disappoint them more. In a lot of ways, obviously they feel like they've let me down, but I also know how much pain they've gone through. Ultimately, Katie decided to make the round the world trek to meet her biological parents and as the note specified, she met them on the broken bridge. She flashed a huge smile as soon as she saw them. 
Katie's biological mother, Fen Shang, immediately burst into tears as she hugged her daughter. Then she fell to the ground as she confessed, Mom is so sorry. But her regret was overshadowed by her joy. Finally, I've seen you, she said. Katie went on to spend the next two days at her biological family's home. The experience meant so much to everyone in spite of the fact that she doesn't know Mandarin and they speak little English. Now that we have met her, we miss her even more than before, Fen Chang said. Katie agreed, adding she hoped to see her Chinese family again someday. More importantly though, the experience showed how much she was loved. Indeed, she described the feeling as almost overwhelming. I know my adoptive parents love me, and now I have this whole other love that I never knew existed, but I guess was always there, she said. <laughs>